Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I'm going to be giving you an update on Remote ID, focusing on FRIA updates and means of compliance for the Remote ID process. Let's get to it. Remote ID is a pretty hot topic these days for RC modelers, whether you're flying RC planes or quadcopters because remote ID will become the law of the land on September 16th of 2023. <clears throat> I'm filming this right now, February 2nd of 2023. So we don't have to do anything to comply with the remote ID until September 16th of this year, but things are happening in the background with the FAA and other organizations that it's good to keep track of. So what is remote ID? In a nutshell, remote, I, remote ID is a way for the FAA, law enforcement, other agencies to track your drone in flight. It could be an RC model, it could be a quadcopter, but remote ID, when it's working, will know the altitude, speed, geographic location of the drone, some other emergency conditions, like if it's returning to its home base, and most importantly for modelers, it'll know the takeoff position of that drone, where it went into the air. The assumption is the drone operator will probably be at that location. There's a lot of concern from modelers if other parties can determine where they're flying their drone, there could be harassment or personal safety issues. And I'll talk about that a little bit in this video. So to continue with the history of remote ID, there were increasing incursions in controlled airspace of drone operators. Right now, the FAA tracks that. I've got a, another video with remote ID even legally can look at. <clears throat> there's, a prob there's approximately 100 incursions of drones into controlled airspace where they, where they have no clearance to do so that have been reported by pilots to the FAA. The FAA is increasingly concerned about an accident potential of these drones and uh, controlled airspace. They need to know where these drones are. There are other government agencies that are concerned. There have been several cases of drones actually flying across military bases in the United States, taking pictures. Even the Department of Defense is not quite sure, what do we do with this? Do we shoot it down, do we shoot it down, et cetera. They need to have further information, who these drone operators, where they are, and so they can basically do an enforcement action. So in 2019, the Congress put into the FAA Reauthorization Act direction to the FAA to do something about remote ID. The FAA, as they do for anything they're directed to do, wrote a draft proposed rule, put it out for comments. They get 53,000 comments on this draft rule. So very thoughtful comments, changes are made. The FAA worked with industry groups to include the Academy of Model Aeronautics, and they came up with the final rule. The final rule is published and in effect. And I'll repeat this a couple times throughout the video. We as model pilots, RC or drone, we don't have to do anything to comply with the remote ID until September 16th, 2023. This is being filmed in February of 2023. But there are some things happening in the background that will help you with a, a better understanding of the remote ID. The first one is the FAA mandated manufacturers who are building drones to comply with the remote ID requirements by September 16th, 2022. The manufacturers couldn't meet that date. Discussions with the FAA the FAA slipped the manufacturer compliance date from September 22nd to December 16th, 2022. December 16th has come and gone. The FAA has not changed that date, but in doing research, the FAA is not doing any vigorous enforcement of that December 16th, 2022 compliance date. Uh, manufacturers still have to meet the compliance, but it's unclear exactly when the FAA is going to mandate that has to be done. Uh, in other words, the date that manufacturers have to comply with remote ID to sell their drones. The other thing, uh, second out of three things with remote ID, you have the manufacturer compliance. The other one is if you have your own RC model, perhaps you build it, you had an older model that does not have remote ID in the electronics, what do you do? The FAA has um, asked for manufacturers to come up with a remote ID module. This would be a small module that you attach to your airplane outside, inside to be determined, and that will fulfill the remote ID function. And you can swap that out among your airplanes. Nobody has seen one of these in a production status. You will see some pictures of a one that they uh, made kind of by hand to see if this would work. It's a fairly big uh, module. Again, nobody knows the price or cost, but what I will say just based on experience, 
This is the ultra micro electronics that I use in many of my videos for uh, Guillo model conversions. I'll have some examples in the description. This little bit of electronics is a receiver, electronic speed control, two servos. This is the antenna right here. So if they can make something with all that capability of this, I think the remote ID module, I'm optimistic that they'll have something lightweight and fairly affordable. But again, we don't have to worry about that until September 16th, 2023. Now the third area that I'm going to focus a little bit more on is FRIA. FRIA stands for FAA Recognized Identification Area. What the FRIA is, it's a section of airspace to be defined by the FAA where modelers like myself, yourself, can fly our regular RC models, our drones, without any real ID at all. Again, in a FRIA, it's just like we fly today. You fly your model, there is no um, RFID required while you're in the FRIA, um, keeping your model within visual sight. So let's talk about the FRIAs a little bit more. There are no FRIAs in existence today, February 2023. The FAA is in the process of working out a way to determine FRIAs. Let's take a quick look at the FAA website about what they say to establishing a FRIA. This is the section of the FAA website that discusses FRIAs. You can do a Google search for it. it. Discusses what a FRIA is. We can fly there without remote ID. Where are the FRIAs? There'll be a database we'll go through later on that and how to apply. Notice the way you apply is through a community-based organization. The AMA is working out details of this, so the FAA, as we speak in February of 2023, should be complete in a few months. Notice that a key part of a FRIA is what the FAA calls a community-based organization, or CBO. What the FAA wants to do is partner with community-based organizations that are involved with the modeling activity to use them uh, for ideas and as a focal point for issues of FRIAs. The first community-based organization designated by the FAA to do this is the Academy of Model Aeronautics that happened back in November of 2022. So the AMA is now officially authorized by the FAA to be an advocate to work the FRIAs with the FAA. FAA, uh, with the FAA. The AMA is fully aware of this. They're very pleased to take on this role. Communications are being sent to the various AMA clubs throughout the country. But what will probably happen is the AMA will contact your modeling club officers with procedures. They'll fill out information, give it to the AMA. The AMA will communicate that to the FAA. They'll get to know each other. And the FAA will grant free a status. There will be a geographic location, how far out it goes, the altitude. But once you have a free established, after September 16th, 2023, you're free to fly without any remote ID. And to just give you an idea how far along this process is, let's take a look again at the FAA website where they discuss um, locations of FRIAs. So the FAA is truly planning ahead for drone operations of the National Airspace System. This is their UAS data delivery system on their website. It shows a lot of information to include categories, and these are recreational flyers, and here are the locations for FRIAs for recreational flyers. Now, this is updated in January 2023. There are no FRIAs yet, but this is where you can find out where they are. So as we discussed earlier, manufacturers are in the process of um, installing remote ID in their drones. Some manufacturers have claimed they've already done this with a firmware update. The important thing is you don't have compliance with remote ID until the FAA blesses that and says that you do. And there is a document that has the compliance status of manufacturers with remote ID. We'll take a look at this in a moment, but this is the first and final step to determine if your drone, uh, remote ID module, model, and so forth is compliant with the remote ID. You look it up here with the model number, manufacturer, serial number, etc. If you're on there, you're remote ID compliant. Again, background information from now, but this will become more important when we have to comply with the remote ID after September 16th, 2023. So let's take a look at the FAA website uh, to include the, uh, the um, internet address that has the compliance status of various manufacturers with remote ID. And there's already about 100 of these uh, to date. So this is on the web right now. This is the FAA's UAS Declaration of Compliance. It has the public document list as well as the means of compliance. We'll go through both of those. And so these are on the web right now with reference documents, what manufacturers have to do to come in compliance with remote ID. So it's about seven pages of various manufacturers, tracking, indexes, models, and so forth. We'll go to look at the seventh page. 
was updated as recently as September 22, 2022. Let's just take a look at what it means to be an accepted uh, for the remote ID. Uh, here's your accepted green. It's got the tracking number. Uh, it's got when it was created, the declaration of compliance, micro drones, all that stuff. This means you're street legal for remote ID. Then we go back to the home page. Let's take a look at the means of compliance. This is a very technical series of documents. This is what has been accepted by the FAA that the manufacturers of remote ID, if they are in compliance with these discussions here, they are going to get approved for remote ID. It's extremely dense technical testing material, but this is out here. So the various manufacturers, to include perhaps people that make um, just regular RC sets, know what they have to do to be in compliance with remote ID. As we learn more about remote ID and get more information, uh, we'll learn more. For example, the FAA has mandated that the remote ID, if it's built into the drone, you can't turn it off. It always has to be on. Even if you're flying a remote ID compliant drone in a free airspace, it still has to broadcast. So that is just the way it works. And the question always comes up with modelers or people that are new to dealing with the FAA. Well, what's going to happen if I don't have it or I get caught or whatever? And what the FAA does when they have new items like this, their vision is compliance before enforcement. They want, if you are caught flying without remote ID when you should be, to make it a learning experience to try to make you comply. There is always a possibility of enforcement. My guess is on the early days, the enforcement will not happen unless there's an egregious breaking of the rules. For example, if somebody decides to fly a drone over a Super Bowl to take some video, that will be dealt with fairly seriously if there is a threat to the public. But that is um, the way the FAA is looking at it right now. Again, nothing we have to worry about till after September 16th, 2023. It's important to keep in mind the FAA's absolute focus is, is safety for the traveling public and anybody operating the national airspace system. We may look at our drones and RC airplanes as models that we enjoy doing, but the FAA doesn't look at, at them as a pleasant pastime or a toy. They are aircraft operating the national airspace system, and the FAA has taken the road ID quite seriously. As I mentioned before, outside of the safety concerns of straying into control airspace, which happens, there have been more than a few occasions of very sensitive sites, say nuclear power plants, military bases, where drones have been observed flying through that. And so there needs to be some way to identify them and find out where they took off to try to figure out who is flying this drone. There is a lot of concern from models, well, geez, if the general public can figure out where I'm flying, they might threaten me. And there have been cases uh, where models have been approached by uh, people not involved in the flying, uh, not wanting them to fly their models. I don't have an answer for this today. The FAA does not have an answer for this today. I believe we will have a greater understanding of this as we use it more and more. What I would say is that the um, current remote ID as part of the 53,000 comments, there was a time when the remote ID plugged into like an internet database. That was just too hard to do because there are large sections of the country where you just could not get an internet connection before flying. The compromise was that the remote ID is broadcasting any time the model is operating. So from the time of takeoff to landing, you're broadcasting your position. So it's not on 24-7. Also, depending on the model, it's going to be likely a fairly short range broadcast. Probably you're going to have to be within eyesight or earshot of the drone to pick up the remote ID signal to find out where people are flying. Again, more to be determined as this is actually uh, implemented. This is different than the automatic dependent surveillance broadcast system that is a, being installed in full-scale aircraft where they actually broadcast your position based on satellite navigation to the world. With um, the ADSB, you could actually log on to a map and find out in the world where aircraft are flying. This is not the case for remote ID because, again, it's just going to be fairly close range where this is. The other thing just to be aware of, and I covered this in my earlier video, on is remote ID even legal? The remote ID has already been challenged in federal court. Uh, some modelers took action in July of 2022 saying that it invaded their privacy. By broadcasting where they were flying, they um, had a right to privacy that they felt was illegal under the Fourth Amendment. The federal court rejected this in a three to zero decision. Uh, they said there are certain aspects of life in America 
where you do not have a right to privacy, think driving a car on a public highway, attending an NFL football game. When you're operating an aircraft in the national airspace system, you do not have a right to privacy. There could be future challenges, there could be variations of this, but that is where we are for now, at least with the legal challenges to remote ID. So that is my update for now on remote ID. What I would say in remote ID, drones in general, is just they're exploding in uses, both for commercial use and for hobbyists, like myself, perhaps you viewing this video. Also, there are some pretty big industry players, FedEx, UPS, and so forth, <clears throat> that want to expand their drone operations. They see remote ID as a very important foundation for the proper, legal, safe growth of this hobby. So. Personal opinion, I don't see remote ID going away, so we're going to have to figure out how to deal with it. Uh, the FRIAs are an interesting development. And just as an example of how things can develop, just let me give you one thought for the FRIAs. I don't know if this is going to be true or executable, but FRIAs are issued to Academy of Model Aeronautics AMA clubs. I've had some people write into me, well, geez, I live in the middle of Montana. There's no AMA club anywhere near here. Why can't I fly in my field without that, or without the remote ID? Again, the FAA is not going to make any carve out flying in your local neighborhood. The national airspace system is the national airspace system, but this is a consideration. What does it take to form an AMA club? The answer is you need a minimum of five members, three of which have to be over 19 years old. You need a safety officer and you have to have rules and guidelines. It's not that hard to establish an AMA club if you have five AMA members getting together. There is a possibility people um, could establish their own smaller clubs with a few number of members, apply for FRIA, and have uh, FRIAs established in locations that may be more convenient to their flying activity. So just an idea for the group. Um, we'll see more of these discussions evolve as time goes on. But again, remote ID is coming. September 16th, 2023, manufacturers are working full speed to get it um, installed and built. The FAA is already approving people for this, and it will be all behind the scenes. We don't turn anything on at all. It's just there. It'll be on. The only people who have to really think about it are if you have a home-built model, one that was not built in at the factory, you have to put in the module and go from there. So that is my update on Remote ID, uh, February 2nd, 2023. Good luck, and we'll see you in the next video.